Public Library Podcast. I'm Erica O'Rourke, one of the Reader's Advisors at the Library, and today we have a special guest, Outreach Associate Zach Steckel. Hi, I'm glad to be here. I'm so glad you agreed to join us. We're going to get to the books in a minute, but can you tell us a little bit more about what you do here at the library? Sure. So as an outreach associate, I work with patrons who specifically can't visit the library for one reason or another. Uh, The majority of my patrons are in retirement homes, and I build individual relationships with them and learn what kinds of books that they like and choose books and bring books to them every week. I have around 40 people that I work with, and they have wide and varied reading interests and lots of strong opinions, and it's really wonderful to work with them. That sounds amazing. What is the Thank best you. part of your job? I mean, it's it's definitely when I pick a book for someone that they, it's a, it's a brand new author, it's something that they'd never heard of, and they love it. That's really satisfying. What has surprised you about your job? Believe it or not, like how cute the bookmobile is. I love the bookmobile so much. I never used a bookmobile when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And going on board and seeing how Gail puts together specific curated shelves for for holidays or for dinosaurs, it's just like very compact and adorable. And Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would necessarily have thought of a giant truck that delivers books to be cozy, (laughs) but it absolutely is. It really is. It's the most joyful, magical experience walking on the bookmobile. I just love it. What would you like people to know about outreach? Well, I think first that it's an option. The home services program doesn't have to be just for people in retirement communities. It can be people who are disabled and can't get to the library. We can figure out services for people who don't have access to physical transportation. The mission of the library to provide access to wonderful books <laughs> um, and DVDs and audiobooks, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. The fact that this library will go so far as to deliver (laughs) if someone needs it, I think is really important. I want people in the community to know that they can call up the library and request and say, hey, this library seems awesome, but I can't use it for one reason or another. Could you help me use it? And we have dedicated staff to help make that happen. Absolutely. So are there any books that have been a particular favorite among some of your patrons? Yes. Uh, My patrons read a lot of different kinds of books, but for some reason, one kind of book has really been cutting across a lot of different layers of interest, and it's World War II, either nonfiction or historical fiction, especially if it's nonfiction, uh, if it's written in a more novelistic style. I've had several patrons who normally have pretty distinctly different reading styles and preferences tell me that they loved A Woman of No Importance by Sonia Purnell. That came out in 2019. It's the true story. It's nonfiction about Virginia Hall from Baltimore. This is a woman who lost her leg after she shot herself in the foot at age 27. But in World War II, uh, she became the Gestapo's most wanted allied agent in France. Uh, She was an extremely decorated spy helping the French resistance. Um, All with her wooden leg that she called Cuthbert. (laughs) Um, And I've had multiple patrons who don't know each other who have read this independently telling me that it is a energizing and exciting and important story for people to know. Well, it sounds incredibly appealing. And I know that that's been popular with our patrons on the desk as well. They'll come over and ask us about it. Okay. So I am a very seasonal reader. Are you? Not so much for me. I definitely go through phases Okay. (laughs) where I'm reading a lot of books that are like of a specific topic. But no, no, I I don't. I don't like I'll read Christmas books in July (laughs) if I want to. (laughs) (laughs) Fall is my favorite reading season. I really pivot towards bigger books, some of those award winners, critically acclaimed, um, just more substantial stories. 
And so I'm very excited because our fall book buzz has come out. It is a collection of the most anticipated fall reads on the Popular Services staff. And that is available on YouTube. We'll put the link to that in the show notes. But before I talk about my fallish read, I wanted to look back at my summer book buzz list and revisit one of the titles that I talked about during the summer book buzz. Last June, I was super excited about the book Mortal Follies by Alexis Hall. It's a queer historical romance set in a version of Regency England where magic is real. You know, curses exist and mermaids will make ball gowns and things like that. It's the story of Melis Mitchellmore, who discovers that she's been put under a curse when her gown starts unraveling at a high society ball, endangering her chances to find a husband because, oh my goodness, how scandalous. The only person who might be able to help her break the curse is Lady Georgina Landrake, who everybody suspects is both a witch and a murderess. But the more that they work together, the more May realizes she doesn't want a husband. She wants to be with the grumpy, irresistible Georgina, assuming that, of course, this curse doesn't kill them both first. The story is absolutely madcap fun, and the chemistry between May and Georgina is terrific. The entire cast, though, secondary characters included, is utterly delightful, including the narrator, who is Puck from Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. I can't wait to read more books set in this world. I think if you liked um, India Holton's Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels, or if you've enjoyed any of Alexis Hall's contemporary novels, this is a fantastic choice. I will give you a quick heads up. This book is mostly closed door when it comes to love scenes, but there is a surprising amount of non-magical cursing. So just be aware of that going into it. That sounds really enticing. It's so much fun. I love Alexis Hall. I, yeah. I, it's amazing to me that he can move so effortlessly between historical romance and really contemporary romance. He's got mm. a he's got a contempt based on a show like The Great British Bake Off. Fun. It's so much oh fun. Oh my gosh. Um, so I just the things that he does well, he does well consistently. I feel like The Great British Bake Off has inspired a couple of different sort of spin-off books recently, like The Golden Spoon, The mm-hmm. Mystery. A lot of my patrons have really liked that. Yeah, think of Jessica that as like, Maxwell, I yeah. think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting that it's we've hit that point juggernaut. culturally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been reading and loving lately? I love graphic novels. I love comics uh, of all kinds. And I love libraries <laughs> because they <laughs> allow me to read inordinate numbers of graphic novels that I would not be able to I don't know. I wouldn't want to justify buying entirely for myself. (laughs) But something that I read and loved recently is Impossible People by Julia Wirtz. It came out uh, in June of this year. And it's a comedic graphic memoir, uh, primarily about the cartoonist Julia's recovery from alcoholism. But it's also about urban exploring, the ups and downs of relationships and heartbreak, and ultimately the enduring power of friendship and community as a pathway for positive personal change. The book deals with heavy topics for sure, but it's also seriously hilarious with Lots of bizarre moments that literally made me laugh out loud. I found it extremely difficult to put down, uh, partially because the illustrations of New York City are gorgeous and detailed, almost like crisply drawn hidden object pictures. And Julia is, is complex and lovable and realistically depicted. It really reminded me of Alison Bechdel's Dykes to Watch Out For. Both comics have these separate but interconnected stories full of wit and humor, And they also have this quality of being a young, slightly lost adult who's also kind of a mess, but is doing their best to figure it out. And I find that extremely relatable. It takes a a really talented, creative person to be able to balance hard topics like addiction and tragedy with humor enough that people want to keep reading it. Yes, yes. Um... That is exactly how I would describe this. Well, it sounds like she excels at it. Yeah. 
Well, on another note, here is a book that surprised me with how much I enjoyed it, um, and that is Mrs. Plansky's Revenge by Spencer Quinn. This is the story of Loretta Plansky. She's a well-off widow in her 70s who loses her life savings in a cyber scam. Someone calls impersonating her grandson. She hands over her passwords to all of her accounts, and they clean her out. The police tell her that the money is gone forever, but then one of them just happens to mention that they think the call came from this small town in Romania. And so Loretta Plansky sets out for Romania to get her money back. It is also the story of the thief, Dinu, the Romanian kid who's been pressured into working for his uncle's criminal enterprise and making these calls. And the thing about it is, it's not really a whodunit. Like, we know it's Dinu from the very first chapter. The real issue is, is Loretta Plansky going to get her money back? And so in that respect, it is a cozy thriller, if that's a genre. There's very little on-screen violence, and there's a lot of humor as we watch her quest for justice. There are also a lot of coincidences in this story, a lot of convenient things that happen. So if you're looking for a really tightly constructed, elegant puzzle of a book, this is not that. But Mrs. Plansky is a great character. She's clever and kind and determined. She deeply wants to believe the best about everyone, almost everyone, and that includes her 'er ne'er-do-well kids who keep hitting her up for money. She keeps finding herself in the most unexpected situations and then finding a way out. And so this is the first in a series, and I'm really eager to see what scrapes she gets into next. It's a quick, breezy read for fans of The Thursday Murder Club and The Marlowe Mysteries. Thanks again for joining us today, Zach. Thanks for having me. If you are interested in our outreach services or you know someone who might benefit from them, we will put information in the show notes about how to reach out and contact Zach and their coworkers. And you can always find us on the library's website, Shelf Life the Blog, or by emailing us. You can also support the podcast by sharing this episode with your friends and subscribing wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, keep reading, keep watching, 